I remember back in 2005 when I saw the commercial for the original Flat Out game. Cars and reckless driving and their groovy crews will become a ride of peril. It flashed on screen and before I could even realize what I'd just seen, it was over. I spent weeks trying to find the source of this mysterious awesome looking game I saw on TV, and when I finally figured out it was called Flat Out, you bet your ass I went out and I bought myself a copy. To this day, Flat Out remains one of the coolest and funnest rally demolition racing games I've ever played. No racing game today could even come close to how much excitement that game brought me. From carnage-filled races to destructive and sadistic minigames, the original Flat Out will always have a place on my game shelf. The sequel, Flat Out 2, expanded upon the original and not only exceeded expectations, but in many ways exceeded the success of the first one. But the other day I was browsing Steam and I stumbled upon Flat Out 3 Chaos and Destruction. Not only was I surprised at the reviews, but this game was ranked so low on Steam it showed up as one of Steam's most negatively reviewed games. Now this didn't make sense to me because I remember playing a third flat out game when I was younger. It wasn't as good as the first two, but it wasn't bad either. At least, not this bad. And that's when I did some research. Turns out that although Flat Out Ultimate Carnage is technically the third game in the franchise, they actually made a game called Flat Out 3 Chaos and Destruction, which I was unaware of. Can it be, I thought? A bad flat out game? I just couldn't believe it was that bad. That was, until I tried it. What is this? This is not the flat out I remember. This feels like a completely different game. That's not even really a figure of speech either. This game feels like it was originally a low budget untitled racing game that got the flat out title to just push more sales. Nothing about this game feels like the first two. The tracks have weird names, the game makes you pick from a bizarre selection of drivers, but the gameplay, oh god the gameplay. If you can go back about 10 years gameplay wise then that's what you get here. The vehicles have no weight to them, and the original flat out physics have just left the building altogether. The funny thing about this game is if it didn't have the flat out name attached to it, it probably wouldn't have been received so negatively. It still wouldn't have been good, but I don't think it would have been this far down the list. If I had to sum up how Flat Out 3 feels, I'd say it's actually very reminiscent of a 90s racing arcade game, but unfortunately, that's not what Flat Out is. While playing Flat Out 3, I began to think more and more about how this game even came to be. Who made it? Why is it so different from the first two? Uh, why is it so bad? Well, while Flat Out 1 and 2 were developed by Bugbear Entertainment, Flat Out 3 Chaos and Destruction was developed by another company altogether, a company by the name of Team 6 Game Studios, a company who the same year released games such as Street Racer Europe 2 and Hyper Fighters, both of which, as you can predict, did extremely poorly. But wait, it gets better. The more I dug down this rabbit hole, the more interesting everything started to get. I found out that Team 6 Game Studios released more than one Flat Out game. They were actually in charge of making a port of Flat Out to the Nintendo Wii. Now your first thought is probably something like, well, how bad could they possibly fuck up a port? I mean, what can they possibly do to son of a bitch? What happened? What did they do? Does this gameplay remind you of anything? Yeah! Looks like Nintendo Wii never got an official port of the original Flat Out game. No. Instead what they got was this. This horrible remake. This travesty to the Flat Out series. At a certain point I realized that I just discovered four games by Team 6 that were absolutely terrible. So I did the only thing I thought I needed to do, and that's go through their entire game library to find a decent game, because after all, they did need to redeem themselves. So I started going game by game. Pizza Dude, bad. Downtown Challenge, bad. Manhattan Chase, bad. Battle Metal Street Riot Control, bad. Ultimate Monster Trucks, bad. Calvin Tucker's Farm Animal Racing, bad. Alpha Zylon. Bad. I legitimately couldn't find a single decent game that this company made, and the fact that there was not only one, but now two bad flat out games made me slightly disappointed. 
flat out changed the way rally demolition games should be played, and for someone's first experience on the Wii to be this, I mean, it's just depressing. Team 6 Game Studios also released a flat out game on mobile, and from what I've seen, it looks exactly like Flatout 3. Shocker. However, I was shocked again when I discovered that there was indeed a Flatout 4. Playing Flatout 4 after playing Flatout 3 felt like a breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air in a room reeking of fresh diarrhea. I realize that isn't saying much because Flatout 4 still isn't on par with the first two, but I mean, my god, anything feels like a great game after playing Flatout 3. I don't know if we'll ever get another Flatout game, but I can only hope that whoever the developers are, are not Team 6 Game Studios. Well anyway guys, that is the video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more stuff like this. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, Detroit suburb, Detroit industry. Um, oh, reverse suburb. Oh, and reverse industry. Great. So I can just play the same tracks backwards. I'm sure they're not all like this, are they? Oh, they are. Okay. Playing Flat Out Floor. Playing Flat Out 4 after playing Flat Out 3 felt like a brush of fresh air. Oh my god, am I having a fucking stroke?